Welcome to the Self-Help Coaching Podcast, where insights, attitudes, and methods for success get illuminated. Learn what leaders and change workers have done and are doing now to create magnificent futures. We interview great guests who inspire you to overcome obstacles and achieve your goals. Be sure you visit our website at self-helpcoaching.com. While you're there, subscribe to us via your favorite network. Now, just relax as you listen. You can do something else, but be ready to make an important note. And let's get started. The title of this interview is The Five Biggest Mistakes Divorced Parents Make and How to Avoid Them. We'll be talking about effective ways to address divorce, co-parenting, and dating after divorce challenges, especially as a parent. My guest is Rosalyn Sadaka, CDC. She's a recognized, she's recognized as the voice of child-centered divorce. Before I proceed, Rosalyn, I want to say that your last name, Sadaka, reminds me of Boudica. Do you know who she was? I've heard of her. Yes. She was a great British leader in ancient Britannia during Roman occupation days 2,000 years ago. And she really, and I, I love ancient Rome. I'm very influenced by them. But she really stood up to them and put them in their place. She was a fantastic leader, a great symbol of defiance and independence. Check Boudica out. So you have a slight similarity in your last name. And also, what does a CDC stand for? Certified Divorce Coach. Certified divorce. I thought it might have been a Centers for Disease Control, but now <laughs> Certified Divorce Coach. Very excellent. I'm PDC, Personal Development Coach, but very good. So Rosalind is a divorce and co-parenting coach and founder of the Child Centered Divorce Network, which provides advice, programs, coaching, and other valuable resources for parents who are facing, moving through, or transitioning after a divorce. She is the author of how Do I Tell the Kids About the Divorce? A Create a Storybook Guide to Preparing Your Children with Love, an internationally acclaimed ebook designed to help parents get through the tough divorce talk with the best possible outcome for themselves and their children. Rosalind has also created several ebooks and e courses on co parenting success strategies, including an eight hour anger management program for co parents. She also hosts the Divorce, Dating, and Empowered Living radio show and podcast. In addition, Rosalind is a dating after divorce coach and co-author of 99 Things Women Wish They Knew Before Dating After 40, 50, and Yes, 60, as well as the Dating Rescue eCourse and Create Your Ideal Relationship Kit for Women and Mastering the Challenges of Dating, a Success Formula for Men. She is a national contributor to numerous divorce, dating, and parenting websites and blogs. Rosalind is the 2008 first place winner of the Victorious Woman Award, as well as the 2011 International Women's Day Outstanding Service Award winner for her work with divorce and parenting issues. That is a fantastic and extraordinary resume, Rosalind. Fantastic. It's a pleasure to have you on and to meet you. Pleasure to be here with you. One of the things I want to point out, you know, I've, I have a friend who is a relationship coach here up here in New York. By the way, uh, audience, we, we, another, one thing that Roslyn, another thing Roslyn and I have in, in common, we're both from Brooklyn. I'm still in Brooklyn. She's over in sunny Florida right now, warm Florida. I'm in cold Brooklyn, but that's fine. <laughs> but I have a friend. Her name is Valerie Green. She's been on the show. She is a relationship coach and very good one. But I love your specialization. Divorce and older people. I'm 56 years old. So, I mean, I really could probably do better listening to your advice and principles than Valerie Green's because that, you know, hey, that specialization is very applicable, right? For whatever demographic or psychographic. So great stuff. Great to have you with these, speci these specialities. I'm really looking forward to this. I've been looking forward to this interview. And later on at the end, we'll talk about your websites. Great, great websites. I, I love what you're about. Fantastic. But let's get right into it. Uh, so we're, we're going to be talking about, oh, I already mentioned, we're going to be talking about divorce and co-parenting and dating. But let me ask the first question. What is a child-centered divorce and why did you create the Child-Centered Divorce Network for parents? Yes. 
So a child-centered divorce is a divorce in which parents understand that the children have to come first when you're making an adult decision to, to break up your relationship. If you had no children, it's a, it's a simple process. It may be aggravating and frustrating um, and time consuming, but once the divorce is over, it's over and you could go your separate ways. As you know, when you have children, that's not the case. You're going to be co-parents for the rest of your lives. Hopefully, if that, if that you're making mature decisions, and so you want to do the best, make the best decisions on behalf of your children before, during, and long, long after that divorce. And that's what the Child Centered Divorce Network is all about, helping parents and supporting them every step of the way and understanding that this is a lifelong experience. Well, I'm really glad to hear all this stuff. And one of the reasons why I was very interested in you, and especially now speaking with you, you know, I, like many, many people, uh, I'm the, I'm going to say product of a divorce, but I'm going to say my parents split up when I was young. I was 10. Uh, and um, I'll never forget the experience. It was St. Patrick's Day, uh, mm -hmm. which is March 17th, 1975, I believe. We, I was in Catholic. My, my siblings and I were in Catholic school, private school here in Bensoners, Brooklyn. And it was Wednesday, half a day. I came home. All the family was convened at my house. Very unusual. Not a holiday. What's this? And then they're all stone faced too, right? And my and they said, and my father said, we had to talk to us kids. I have a, a younger sister and an older brother. We're in our Catholic school uniforms. And he said that he had to leave home. My sister's crying and bawling. My older brother's crying and bawling. I stood there in the middle, stoic. But inside, it was like every floor. I was a building. Every floor within me collapsed like a pancake. I just, and it was devastating to me. Uh, and, you know, quite frankly, um, great sadness came to me. And that later on in life, that became a great rage, turned into a great rage, which is pretty common, pretty standard fair. But that's what sadness often turns to. And I will often look at that, that it was really a pathology for me. That I, if, you know, if I had, and I'm not, I don't, I don't blame any of my, either parents, but if I had been tended to more, with more attention, therapy or whatever, that I would have been different <laughs> and how I would have had a, a different experience, you know, because I went on, I became a punk rocker. I was very angry with the world, you know, yeah. you know, I, 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 I often said that if you could, if you would have showed me where the, the doomsday button was, I would, I would have pressed it. That's mm -hmm. the anger I had with the world, you know? <laughs> so yeah. I, I'm, I'm glad to say I worked through it, <laughs> but what can you, what can you, what do you say about that? Yes. Well, unfortunately that's all too common. And that's why I created the child centered divorce network, because it's not fair to innocent children to have to go through that experience. There were ways of, of preparing for parents to prepare in advance to have that really tough divorce conversation with children. And that's why I created the How Do I Tell the Kids About the Divorce ebook because there's things, there's messages your parents need to provide and there's approaches to doing it to make it safer and saner and especially emotionally a better for the children, because this is one of the most difficult conversations any child's going to experience in their life. And because I went through that with my own son, and I'll, I'll tell you a personal story. My son was 11 when we divorced, and it took me years and years to make the decision to do that because I didn't want to break up the family and, and psychologically harm him. Ultimately, he was starting to show signs of headaches and other signs of stress in the family because we were fighting and things were not flowing well at home. And I knew that having the divorce would be healthier in the longer run for him. And so when I made that decision, I was very traumatized about how to break the news and stayed up weeks of sleepless nights in preparation for that conversation. And ultimately I came up with an innovative idea that I had never seen anywhere and used it. And 20 years later, well, um, 15 years later, my son is in his early teens and he, in his early 20s as an adult. And he came to me one day out of the blue and he said, you know, Ma, 
I just wanted to let you know that you and daddy did a very good job with the divorce. And I wanted to thank you because most of my friends whose parents divorced either hate their parents or very angry at them. And I think you guys were great. And I just let out such a sigh of relief. I was holding on to so much tension and guilt about did I screw up my son as a result of this divorce? And that moment became the catalyst for my founding the Child Centered Divorce Network because I realized that I had a lot that I could share with other parents. And ultimately I became a divorce and co-parenting coach and wrote several eBooks and e-courses and programs to help parents do it in the best possible way, always mindful of how the impact is gonna be on the children because if, if you do it in a better way, the kids are gonna have less stress and anxiety and trauma. And unfortunately, we see examples all the time of parents who do it wrong and kids who are paying the prices as you yourself understand. Fantastic. That was such a great statement and explanation. You know, I don't mind sharing too that, you know, I'm a recovering or recovered addict, 21 years clean and sober. I trace the, the genesis of my addiction to that event, to my, which, which was a perceived abandonment of my, my father. It wasn't a real abandonment, but it was a perceived one. It doesn't make a difference. Yes. And, and uh, that's what I felt abandoned, you know, and, uh, and, you know, it's just it was awful for me. And I couldn't, I couldn't be honest about it. You know, uh, I didn't know how to, and uh, just a kid, you know, and I remember later on when my mother had remarried, my father would come pick us kids up. Oftentimes I wouldn't be around for my father to pick up. I'd be hiding. We lived in Staten Island in the rural area. I'd be mm -hmm. hiding in the woods, watching him drive up, pick up my brother and, my sister looked for where's Anthony and I'd be watching in the woods wow. you know, because that's, that's how it affected me. Yes. You know, and I just, it was such, it was so to say, it was definitely the most definitive event of my life. And I loved him and I, I was, and I wanted to become him, but that doesn't negate the, 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 the wound. <laughs> yes. My so, son wrote the forward to my book telling his own story as a child of divorce. And um, fortunately, we were able to avoid a lot of those mistakes. Your parents just didn't understand what to say and how to say it and how to do it yep. in a way to get you kids to understand they didn't have the compassion and the empathy to, to say it in, in a way that made you feel safe and secure and that, that creates terrible um, emotional outcomes for, for children when, it, when it's not handled in that way. And I, I am so sorry for you because it scars children for a lifetime. It did. And I'm, right now, I'm very affected by it. I, mean, I'm, I'm, I almost feel like crying. In fact, I, you could hear it in my voice. Yeah, I'm that's very affected okay. by it. I, I hear I'm, what you're saying. And I'm so glad that you've done this work because, as we all know, divorce is more prevalent than ever. Seems to be rising the the incidence of it, and uh, and children are deeply affected, if not harmed, and they need to be tended to in a special way, a special attention, because you know you turn out like me otherwise. <laughs> and I say that that part tongue in cheek. I mean, I do. I you know I I've had a lot of issues to work through. I'm 56 years old now. I, I've come a long way. I've worked through a lot of issues. Like I, I used to be. I used to have suicidal ideation. Mm -hmm. I used to be very self-destructive. Those yes. things are way in my rearview mirror, thankfully. Uh, but I had to work through them. Unfortunately, I was able to work through them. A lot of people not able to work through them, and they either kill themselves, you know, or they just just, just they die as a result of the addiction. You and know, that's whether... why I'm so passionate about this topic because children are innocent, and no one deserves to suffer that way. Absolutely. Fantastic. Let's take a quick moment to hear from our, our sponsor and we'll be right back with Rosalind Sedaka. This episode of Self-Help Coaching is brought to you by Proficio. Do you like learning by yourself or with others? What if you could do both at the same time? Visit www.proficio.io. That's proficio.io where you can learn in the environment that suits you as you choose.
you are listening to the Self-Help Coaching Podcast with me, with me your Tony, Petro, Tony Petroza, your host, and our guest, Rosalind Sedaka. Great conversations talking about stuff. When I, you hear me, I'm saying this stuff is needed. This, is, this isn't, fi- you know, put, bring out expertise in finding a problem. Here is a very big problem that she's addressing, very big issue in society, uh, and she's addressing it head on, and, and I'm so thankful and happy and happy to have her on on this show and talking about this we were just now we were just talking about children and look okay, let's continue to focus on the children as opposed to the parent um you know necessarily uh, how, how are children of different ages affected by divorce we talked about me being at 10 your child was 11 go on that's a great um, question so infants young children toddlers don't understand what's going on at home, but if the energy is not healthy, if there's tension and fighting anxiety, if the parents are overly loud or overly quiet, kids will pick up on, on the energy. And so they, they are emotionally disturbed when they're living in an environment that's disturbing. When you get into older kids, they also are picking up on things. They don't know, they can't understand what's happening, but they know something at home is not right. And what they need is lots of hugs, lots of attention, lots of I love yous and smiles so that they feel comforted, despite the fact that you may not feel like you want to be doing that because you yourself may be upset as a divorcing parent. When you get into elementary school, kids start acting out more and the more tension and anxiety at home, especially if there's fighting and, and conflict and loud arguments, the more kids, their nervous system gets affected and they, they may start bullying their siblings or, or uh, kids at school and friends and just behaving in different ways. They also may start regressing. You'll, you'll find children suddenly bedwetting and um, wanting to go sleep in the parents' bed and, and wrapping themselves in baby blankets, things that they hadn't done because they're feeling it very insecure and they, they want the comfort and security of things from, from a, younger, a younger time. When you get into middle school, the, they may have more, ex, express more attention and anxiety and they may start having opinions, which really moves into the teen years. When you get into older kids, first of all, the older kids may have more history of the, of the parents before the divorce tension existed. And so there's more contrast between what used to be and what is now. You also have uh, children who will start taking sides and, and siding with, with mom or dad more and creating um, tension in that way and, and um, calling you out on things and trying to support the parent whose side they take. And then again, when kids are feeling stress and anxiety and insecure and wounded and hurt and confused, they're more likely to move into drugs or aggressive behavior or um, bullying and um, having problems with school grades and all of that and or move into retracting into themselves where they become more solitary, they stop playing with friends. Sometimes they're even suicidal because they're so hurt. And children don't have answers for this. As we all know, it's hard enough for parents to come up with solutions to the relationship issues that created the divorce. Children certainly don't have answers and solutions. So they're feeling helpless and lost. And sometimes they're in a home where the parents are acting out or misbehaving or crying or, or, or acting wounded and, and are also wanting the kids to help and support them, which is not a smart thing to do. So as you can see, it becomes a very convoluted, emotional, entangled mess. And what we try to do, especially at the Child Centered Divorce Network, is catch parents as early on as possible, alert them to the warning signs of mistakes that they can avoid, and help them avoid it so that the kids don't have to go through the fear, the anxiety, the insecurity, the, the anger, and all the other emotions that happen when, when they're not being addressed, when they're not being spoken to clearly, where they're not understanding that this is not their fault. All children are innocent when it comes to 
situations like this, adult situations, even if you're fighting about the kids, the kids are innocent, it's your battle, but children don't understand that. And so very often children will blame themselves and they'll think maybe if I didn't get bad grades on my report card, my parents wouldn't be divorcing. Maybe if I wasn't bullying and hurting my sister or my brother, maybe they wouldn't be divorcing. Maybe if I did my chores better, they wouldn't be divorcing. And, and kids will internalize, blame themselves. And of course, it's a no-win situation because it's never their fault. Does that make sense? <laughs> Perfectly. Fantastic. Thank you very much for that. You know, one of the things that I study, I, you know, psychology is my favorite subject. And I'm fascinated by cults. Uh, and my favorite cult is undoubtedly Scientology. <laughs> And L. Ron Hubbard, who I really admire in terms of being a prolific and, and bold person, but of course he's a cult creator and leader, uh, and so something to be very careful about. Uh, but you know, when he wrote uh, Dianetics, and you know, he made it sound like he had this, all this research behind it. It was just him, him and his typewriter. <laughs> But, you know, and, and you know, he, he, he stole a lot of good stuff and that's what, what gave him some credibility, you know, because mostly he was just a science fiction writer is what he was. But he, in his book, he would go, a lot of that book was about uh, uh, the experience of a, of a woman in a prenatal situation uh, and how it affected the, the, the fetus, you know, the, the subsequent baby, the becoming baby. And I thought it was, it was, I thought it was, um, you know, I thought it was possible. I didn't, I didn't buy it necessarily, but I thought it was possible. I mean, why not? You know, energy, you said energy. I mean, so may, so do you, what do you think about that? Is it, do you think that has some validity? I'm going to, I'm starting this, my response to you with, with that early, that, that prenatal part. Well, we're all very sensitive to the energy around us because everything is vibrating, really. Everything in life is energy. I and so we, we all pick up on energy and the more sensitive we are to it, the more we pick it up and it impacts us emotionally and psychologically. So that, that happens with, with all of us. And it's important for parents to be mindful about that because their kids are not always expressing what they're feeling or, or asking questions about what they're feeling, but they're feeling things in a very strong way. Totally. And I, I concur. Energy, you know, energy is, is like, is like, the reality language is how we do our best to communicate about it <laughs> but the energy is is indisputable uh and you know you know you know obviously this this is a personal development podcast i'm all about personal development personal development begins on day one <laughs> right and you know most people don't realize that our formative years are probably the most important era for a, a person, <laughs> right? And and that this you're you're 50 years old or whatever age, you're acting out on beliefs that you created, <laughs> constructed in your formative years. And matter of fact, most of the things, the things that most control us are beliefs that we're not even aware of. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> but, you know, that pro most probably came from the formative years, but not necessarily, but certainly, you know, that we're, that that being subconscious is critical. So. When you talked about these stages, these, these, you know, the sequence of, of ages and the various attentions that they require, I don't dispute that at all. And there's, and there's different ways to approach different ch you know, children at different ages because they are, they're literally developing people. <laughs> and you've got to take that, their stage of development into strong consideration. You know, you, you can't, you can't, uh, run a mare you got to teach a mare how to run before it's, it's a horse and then so yeah, i love the, this this stuff that you, you that you're professing that you've researched and professed and you talked about you know to, to go back to your original answer or the original question about how you got started i know that you you've collaborated with a uh, a social worker right uh is that correct in, your, in some of your books. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Um, my sister, who's a psychotherapist. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. That's a psychotherapist. We've, we've so created, yes, we've created several print books and e-books and e-courses together, especially on the dating after divorce side of the equation, because it's so important to remember once you get through a divorce and you're a parent, 
it's much more complicated to go out into the dating world because you have to be extremely aware about your children and how they are going to be impacted about partners, your dating, how, how they feel about that, knowing that they Rosalind, have another parent. I, Rosalind, I want to get into the dating in the next moment. Let's finish talking about uh, the children a little bit more. Uh, okay. let, let's, let me ask you, what, what, what are the most damaging divorce mistakes so many parents make? Okay, very important. Number one is fighting around the kids. I can't stress that often enough. Research has proven again and again that when kids are exposed to, to fighting, even if it's in another room, even if they hear it on the telephone, it doesn't matter. It, it changes their brains. It changes who they are because they can't handle it. They don't know what to do with the anxiety and hurt that it creates. An, another serious mistake is bad mouthing your ex. It's so easy to feel justified because you feel you were hurt yourself. And, and in many cases, we, we are hurt before and during the divorce process. So it's so easy to say your father is an SOB and your mother is a this and, and start sharing with your kids things that justify. If your mother wasn't an alcoholic, we wouldn't be getting divorced. If your father didn't have the affair, we wouldn't be getting divorced. But it, it hurts children because children innately love both parents. They don't want to hear this, this stuff. And it isn't right for them to hear it because if a child can't do anything to fix a problem, they shouldn't be privy to it. So you don't share adult information with children, especially That's dramatic good. adult information about divorce because it isn't fair to your kids. It robs them of their childhood. And who wants to rob children of their childhood when you're a parent? That is so profound, that's fantastic, but that's so profound, that one particular thing you said, that if a child is, can't be involved in the solution, they shouldn't be privy to the problem. I, wow, that is incredibly poignant. That is, wow. And if parents knew that, think of all the, the pain and hurt that would be eliminated for children if they just followed that one piece of advice that in axiom. that one area. That's, that is... Wow, that I, it really it just totally struck me how, how poignant it is. It's really incredible how, because I, I just obviously I relate my whole life and I could think about my past about when I you know heard problems that I, I couldn't do anything about, but just had you know I would have some negative reaction if you will to it and you know or, or some digging into uh, you know how the world is so screwed and I'm here you know that's great. And there's That's, more, there, there's some other important factors to, for parents to keep in mind. Let's hear it. You don't want to be not only bad-mouthing your ex, but you don't want to be using your kids as confidants. It's very tempting, especially if you have a teenager, to start sharing all, all your woes and problems and, and crying and, and let your child hold you around and say, I'm going to be the man in the family now. I'm going to be taking care of you. Again, that robs them of their childhood. Suddenly they become little adults. Children don't need to be hearing adult information that they can't do anything about. And it, it wounds them on a very deep psychological level. When you turn them into confidence, you're right. supposed to be the adult, you're supposed to be the parent. Right. And related to that, you don't wanna turn them into spies. It's so tempting to say, so what was daddy's girlfriend like? And, <laughs> and what, did, what did you have for dinner? And, Sure, you want to have a casual conversation and ask some questions, but kids know when you're spying, when you're trying to pick up dirt, when you're trying to get information, and they'll either hold back or they'll distort it, or they'll take sides, whatever is going on, it's hurtful for them because, again, they, they don't want to be caught in your dirty laundry, and it's so unfair to, to children. Kids have a, a complex life. It's not easy growing up and being a child. You, you've got friends and, and bullying and, and homework and, and social tension and all kinds of things going on in a normal kid's life. And then when you throw divorce on top of it and you have parents who are not mindful of what it's like for the children and adding another layer of stress and anxiety, no wonder people end up with, with deep psychological wounds. Totally. And then in the, when they get into adolescence, it's probably the worst time of their lives. That's what a, what a conundrum, what a paradox. Yes. Uh, a young teenager, a person who is, you know, an, an early person, an early adult, right? 
who thinks they know everything about the world <laughs> and knows the least about it, you know, and pretends to their friends how knowledgeable they are, has mm -hmm. all, have all this either wounds or development going on, trying to make sense, pretending they got it all figured out. What are, it's a conundrum for them. Yes, and it creates such deep anger and hurt. And a lot of uh, adult children of divorce, and I am sure you're among them, have relationship issues. There, there's a fear of, of getting serious in relationships, fears of commitment, fear of being hurt, fear, fear of trusting people. Um, that, that can last for a lifetime yeah. if one doesn't get support and help therapy or coaching or other support systems. Absolutely. All right, let's take a quick moment to hear from our sponsor and we'll be right back with the Self-Help Coaching Podcast. This episode of Self-Help Coaching is brought to you by Perficio. People value all sorts of things, but Benjamin Franklin teaches us that the most valuable thing we have is time. With it, we can have practically anything. Visit www.perficio.io, that's P-E-R-F-I-C-I-O dot I-O, where you can truly learn how to value time and have that instilled in you so that you can best use time to work for you. You're listening to the Self-Help Coaching Podcast with me, your host, Tony Petroza, and we're listening to the wonderful Rosalind Sadaka. Great, great stuff about divorce and children. And now we're going to get into more into the, the, the big people in this situation, the, the parents, the adults. Uh, welcome back. And Rosalind, how, how can we co-parent more effectively after divorce? Well, it's, it's important to put yourself in your child's shoes and try to experience what it's like to be three or nine or 13 or 19 and experience the world from their perspective. Sometimes you want to get down eye level with them and talk to them. Let your child vent and, ex and express what they're feeling. It's okay for them to be angry at you and hurt and upset. Don't inhibit them from expressing what they're feeling because it's better for them to get it out so that you know what's going on. As co-parents, you want to work as a team as much as possible. You want to think of it as a business, the business of raising these children that we both love. And so you're not adversaries, you're not there to hurt each other. You, you did that in the, in the marriage, now you're divorced. Now we're here for another purpose and that's to take care of those kids. And so you want to cooperate as much as you possibly can. And remember, life is full of changes and unexpected experiences. So if your ex calls you up and says, hey, I can't make it 7.30 on Friday night, can we move it to 8.30 or can we move it to Saturday night? If you're flexible and you say, sure, I understand, then your ex is much more likely to do the same for you when you need it. And this is a lifelong experience. Parents don't understand that your, your child may be nine now, but this, it, the co-parenting doesn't end when they're 18 or 22. It's, it's a lifelong experience. I'm a, a, my son married and I'm a grandma now. And there's tons of experiences when, when I'm with my ex. Happy experiences, sad experiences, times when the family still gets together and both of us have remarried. But you want to be mature and responsible and your kids are watching you, so you want to make mature, responsible decisions. There are co-parenting scheduling tools that I highly recommend that are very low cost for, for parents, co-parents who can't get along well and need extra support. Everything is in writing. So you have the schedule. If there's a time change, you put that in the schedule and both parents have no excuse not to know that the schedule has been changed. Or What's that called? One of them is called our uh, My Family Wizard, but, but there's dozens. If you just Google co-parenting scheduling tools, you'll find many, many of them. Okay. And they all do the same thing. They give you a, a, an app, a place to put everything from financial information wow. to scheduling and, and um, who's picking up who, when, to the, what, who's, where's the size six shoe and, and when the kids have... <laughs> Kids have dental appointments, everything involved in, in the universe of parenting so that you get the um, smoother, easier situation. You're much less likely to have fights and conflicts over little things when it's all in writing. 
also and it's, integrated. it's all integrated with this app that's so yeah. great i mean digital technology i created a virtual coaching program that's what i do you know it's it really yeah. it solves a lot of problems and makes things work together it's just fantastic and not only that but professionals if you have a coach or a therapist can access these emails so if you have an ex who's writing emails in a threatening tone or being belligerent or doing something professionals can look at it and they could go back to the courts and they could say you know you you haven't been communicating in a in a fair way in a professional way in a, in a mindful way and they can be held accountable in court so it it keeps parents more likely to be responsible say as little as as possible and and say it succinctly so that you're not creating a lot of drama the whole idea is to eliminate the drama and educate parents about ways to communicate and there are communication skills that are easy to learn that's what i do in, in coaching is help parents learn how to communicate ways of expressing anger and frustration to ease the tension and lower the the barometer so that you can get along better and uh, and of course the kids will benefit from that Rosalind, you obviously really know what you're talking about <laughs> now uh, do you have any formal training like a neuro-linguistic programming or, or college and psychology but, i mean because i don't think that's necessary but i'm i'm curious oh yes well i i, I have college i've i've done neuro-linguistic programming and a ton of other psychology courses and programs and and becoming a certified divorce coach is, is a program with a certification so um i've i've taken every self-help course and class over the years i, I love it and, you know, i sensed it i sensed that you had a yeah, lot of awful, personal growth yes an awful lot of knowledge in you i mean you exude it <laughs> but you know it's I, I i've said it numerous times you know i'm into psychologies philosophies all these self-helps and personal development nlp certified coach i've got to say and that's one i love it all but i've got to say the most profound thing i've ever done for me as a as a, a, for, a recovering addict was to become clean and sober when yes. i started when i had that and i started having clarity of mind then i could start thinking things through <laughs> and which would you know with a sharp mind as opposed to a you know mind that was intoxicated or otherwise affected it made all the difference in the world and totally <laughs> great Good stuff. You. that that's wonderful that that you've made that level of progress and you're there as a role model for other people to see i i, I love it i love you know i i i've learned so much about about life from life um and part when i was an active addict or alcoholic you know and um and now uh a quote unquote normal person, a recovered act, however you want to say it, uh, someone who was broken, quote unquote, and fixed himself, you know, however you want to say it, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. The point is that I was one way and I deliberately changed into, and, and, and grew and, and got through my issues, worked through these issues that needed to, I had to work through. Uh, and what a difference life is, how life is from just through my eyes of how, you know, like I said, I hate, I hated the world. I wanted to burn it. And now oh. I love it. <laughs> and I want to help people. I want to really make, do great things in the world instead of, you know, instead of blowing it up. Now, that's a huge turnaround. That's a night and day situation. Yes. And, and when you're optimistic about life in the future, people around you pick up on that too. And it makes them feel more confident and secure. So just being around you, so that that's what you're exuding positive energy. That's fantastic. Okay, let's take a, 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 a final uh, commercial break and we'll come back with the final segment with Rosalind Sadaka. This episode of Self-Help Coaching is brought to you by Perficio. What if you could get the results of being coached without a human coach? What if a computer could coach you? Visit www.perficio.io. That's P E R F I C I O dot I O, where you can get coached without scrutiny, judgment, or pressure. You're listening to the Self Help Coaching Podcast with me, your host, Tony Petroza. We're with Rosalind Sadaka. We're talking about divorce. We're talking about. Now, I want to, you know, let's get into 
Okay, we're going to talk a little bit more about divorce, but I, we haven't touched on dating. I want to get into some dating stuff because you are, you're the woman to talk to about that as well. But let me, let me hear the, ask the final question in this list. Uh, what's your most important takeaway message for parents? Remember that you're a role model, that your kids are watching, and it's not what you say, it's, it's your energy and your behavior and your choices and decisions that are impacting your children through life from the youngest ages through adulthood. And so be very careful about what you're showing them. How are you showing them to get along when, when life is challenging, when there's conflict in life and problems? Are you showing them to be aggressive? Are you showing them to be bullying in, in their behavior or, or to be mousy and let someone step on you? You want to teach your children to be assertive, to love themselves, and to treat other people with respect. And that starts with their watching that and learning that from you. So if you get help and support, then your kids are going to be blessed with, with that as, as a role model in their, in their parents. And that's something you'll never regret. And they'll thank you when they're grown adults as my son did. That's great. You know, I, something I wanted to mention earlier, uh, I, I learned this. 25 years ago from personal development. And it's, it's called the, egg, they coined it as the existential paradigm. And the existential paradigm is this, that as children, we're not responsible for what happens to us. But as adults, we're responsible for every single action we take. So children, you know, screwed up children grow up to be screwed up adults. So what happens when you're a screwed up adult? Well, it's your, it's our responsibility to unscrew ourselves, right? It's not your parents anymore. Now, now I'm a big boy. <laughs> now I wipe my own butt. <laughs> right we're doing it for a while now so i've got to i've got to square away myself i've got to work out my own issues work through them because you know the, the blame game is over mm -hmm. that's over the time for that's over it's time for us so we've got to if you want if you want to have a good life you got to take responsibility for it uh, and as a parent you've got a job to do right probably lifelong right <laughs> but especially when they're when the yes. children are young or, or you're in the house or 18 whatever because and the better you take care of them the be less screwing unscrewing they're gonna have to do later on well said <laughs> uh great stuff so we've talked uh, we've talked at length about divorce and children but you know uh, and that's all, again, I've, I've touched on this a bit. That's only half of what you do. You're very into the day. I touched on this at the beginning uh, about talking about um, relationship coaching, but you do a lot of it. I mean, three of you got, I've been to all your websites. They're fantastic. But three of the four websites are about dating. Let's yeah. get into that a bit, just a bit. Yes. Well, I, and I specialize in dating with children because after divorce and you have children, it's different than just moving on in life and making any mistakes you're going to make. You need to be very careful about what you're doing if you have children because you're bringing a new entity into your life and you don't want to have a revolving door of people and you break up every three months and someone new is coming along. So when you're divorced with children, you have to be much more careful. And the first thing I, I say, which is the most important, is look for the lesson in your divorce or your breakup before you move out again into the dating world. It's so easy to blame the ex and say, if it wasn't for that SOB, this and that wouldn't have happened. And I chose this, this jerk. And, and we all have grievances after a breakup. But if you don't take responsibility for what part did I play in the breakup? Why did I choose this person? What, what should I be learning from this breakup so I don't repeat it again? Do you know how often therapists see people who go from one relationship to another, to another, to another, one marriage to another, to another, and it's a different face with the same person they marry again and again. They marry an alcoholic again. They marry an abuser again. They marry someone who isn't responsible, whatever, whatever the issues are, they just repeat the patterns. You need to identify the patterns and make conscious decisions to change. I'm going to do things differently now. I know this has been my type. Why was I attracted to someone who treated me that way or someone that I treated that way? What am I going to do different this time? And, and, the, not, and, the, and the, the funny thing, quasi funny thing is that until we change that pattern, 
or learn the lesson, we are absolutely doomed to repeat it. <laughs> yes, we see it all around us. And, and it's especially egregious when you have children watching mm -hmm. this. What are you teaching them about healthy relationships? We want our children to choose healthy, conscious relationships with, that, are, that are lasting and fulfilling. And that doesn't happen just instantaneously. So we have to really ask ourselves some profound questions, go deep within and really identify what makes us tick. And if we need support, get that support before we go out again and start another round of dating. See a therapist, see a coach, join a group, read, read some books, take some courses, whatever you need to do. And then look for red flags. Very often people show us how they are. We just don't look and see. We're not, we're so involved in the glory and fun of being in love, which is the, only the first step of a relationship, is that falling in, in mad love, that we're oblivious to the fact that, that people are, are mistreating us or uh, avoiding us or not being honest with us. And we need to be very careful in um, the decisions we make so that when, when the red flag ra is raised, that we don't stay in that relationship for another six months or six years. And we say, uh-oh, this is, this is what I've been through before. I, I know this. I played this game before. I'm moving on. I'm going to find someone different. And I do suggest going to different places with different people. If your crowd of single people always goes to the same hangouts to do things together, go with different people and go to different places. Investigate different different facets of interest in your life that you haven't before. Pick up a, a new hobby, an, an instrument, volunteer at an animal shelter, um, e explore uh, dancing or meditation or something that, that just hasn't been part of your background because you're going to meet people in new situations who are new types of people, new kinds of people. And it may be just what you need to to create a new type of energy in, in a new relationship that's going to be healthier for you. You know, I was, we're coming to the close of our interview and I was going to say, uh, I'm going to ask you for your final remarks, but it seems like you've already began them because these are wonderful final remarks. I mean, you could, they're very, it was profound advice, but you want to complete, you want to add any more final remarks? Perhaps? Yes. Make sure you love yourself because if you don't love yourself, you can't find someone else who's going to love you. It's impossible. So do the inner work to, to really love yourself. And if it means working with, with a therapist or a coach or, or an individual to help you reach that level, then do that work because when you love yourself, you exude a level of confidence where, where abusers aren't as likely to come into your energy field and they're not as likely to get away with abusing you. When we don't love ourselves, we accept abusive behavior unconsciously, and that creates unhappy relationships all around. So everything starts with self-love. And when you love yourself, you're more mindful about loving others and treating others better. That is unequivocally true. I found that as a recovering addict, that was the biggest hurdle I had to get over. The biggest one is that, that I deserve good things yes. and that I deserve my own love and that I deserve to be loved. Not in a narcissistic way, right. but in a way where there's a give and a take, a yes. way of humility. That was the, the, the most profound thing that I had to get through. So uh, you really know what you're talking about. <laughs> Great stuff. Rosalind, uh, you have a, I understand you have a free ebook for our audience. Would you tell us about it? Yes. So a free ebook on post-divorce parenting success strategies for getting it right at childcentereddivorce.com. And at childcentereddivorce.com, you'll find tons of free information as well as e-courses, e-programs, e e-books, and my, my own coaching services. So everything is at one place, childcentereddivorce.com. Also, womendatingrescue.com and mensdatingformula.com are online programs that really have wonderful advice on dating and relationships. That's womensdatingrescue.com and mensdatingformula.com. Is it, isn't it women dating rescue or, or is it? Poor? Oh, it is women dating rescue. I am so sorry. You're right. Thank you. Thank you for that. I'm attentive. I'm attentive. Very good. Yeah. And there's also the, uh, 
women dating after 40.com. Yes. Right. Very yes. Good. Thank so you. I, I've been to these websites. They are great websites. I wholly recommend them. They're great stuff. Get the ebook. And by the way, Rosalind, I didn't get any of your social media. Email me your social media because we're going to make a page for you on, on our website. I we'll think I didn't include it. I have all your websites, but none, none of your social media. Okay, then I'm so, happy so to do that. We'll set that up for you, uh, and we'll be happy to do it. Uh, I've got to say, really, you have been, I, I would say, quite frankly and sincerely, one of the most, when I, I'm going to say helpful, because I think that this is a very large and pervasive problem, both for the parent and for the adult, uh, the, chil the child, the children. And, and with the work that you're doing is so not just helpful, but really necessary. It needs to get done. It needs to, people need this stuff. You know? And so uh, God bless you for doing it. Great stuff. I, I really thank you very much. You've been an excellent guest and interview subject. I really appreciate it. Thank you. It's been a pleasure talking with you. That, uh, uh, everyone, everyone, please go to Rosalind's website, get the free ebook. And remember my signature sign, sign off. Every one of us is responsible for ourselves. And we can all use some help. Rosalind, thank you. Thank you for listening or watching. And we'll see you next time on the Self-Help Coaching Podcast. Thank you for tuning in to the Self-Help Coaching Podcast, where insights, attitudes, and methods for success get illuminated. Learn what leaders and change workers have done and are doing now to create magnificent futures. Remember to visit our website at self-helpcoaching.com and enjoy even more great episodes like this one. Again, while you're here, subscribe to us via your favorite network. We look forward to seeing you next time on the Self-Help Coaching Podcast.